Hello everyone. In this example, we want to analyze the motion of a charged particle in a uniform electric field. We have a positively charged plate and we have a negatively charged plate but grounded. The fact that it's grounded implies that the potential of this plate is zero. The potential of this plate is V. This would mean that the potential difference delta V is equal to V minus zero, which is just V. But what do we know? We know that the potential difference V is equal to the work done per unit charge which is equal to the integral from A to B of F dot dr divided by Q. This is going to be equal to the integral from A to B F divided by Q dot dr. But the electric field E is equal to the force a unit charge. So this means that the potential difference will be equal to, there's a negative sign there, negative sign there, will be equal to negative the integral of E dot dr. But the question is, what if the electric field is constant as in this case if the electric field is constant then we will have delta V equal to negative E the integral of the R which is just negative E delta R Hence, in a uniform field, delta V is equal to negative E delta R. Or we could as well say that E is equal to negative delta V divided by delta R. This is the electric field in a uniform field. What this is telling us is that the electric field is simply the potential gradient. In other words, the change in potential per unit distance in an electric field. But what is the meaning of this negative sign? This negative sign basically implies that the electric field always points towards the direction of lower potential. In other words, the electric field line will always be directed from a higher potential to a lower potential. So keep that in mind. So we are going to use this in application with Newton's laws of motion in analyzing the motion of this charged particle inside the electric field. So in a uniform field, one, E is just equal to negative V over negative X. Two, we know that E is equal to F divided by Q. This means that F is equal to QE which is equal to ma. Therefore, the acceleration of a particle in a uniform electric field or in general in an electric field is given by a equal to q e divided by m. This gives us the acceleration of a charged particle inside an electric field. 
Now the next task will be for us to resolve the initial velocity of this charged particle into its x and y component. This is V O X. This is V O Y. So if we do this as a triangle, we are going to have V O X V O Y and this is V O. This angle is theta. So the sine of theta is equal to opposite, which is VOY divided by VO, which means that VOY is equal to VO sine theta. Similarly, cosine of theta is equal to VOX over VO, which means that VOX is equal to VO cosine of theta. This gives us the y component of the velocity of the particle and the x component of the velocity of the particle. Now in order for us to analyze the motion of this particle in the electric field, we need to analyze the x motion independently from the y motion. Now when you do so, it greatly simplifies the procedure. But first, notice one thing. Suppose that the charged particle is right here. This charged particle will experience a force acting downwards. This force F is just going to be equal to QE. Now, this is the force in the Y direction. The force in the X direction is zero. What this means is that the acceleration of the particle is directed downwards. And this is incredibly very similar to the fact that the force of gravity acts downwards. So our expectation is that this charged particle will behave just like a projectile will behave in a gravitational field. Now, <clears throat> so here are the, the gems. AX therefore will be zero because the net force in the X direction is zero. AY will be equal to negative QE divided by M. If I put the vector, I'm going to put a J. So, <clears throat> so what do we have? We would see that x so we have vx will be equal to vox plus axt but we know that ax is zero so vx will be equal to vox which is just vo cosine of theta just as we expected the velocity in the x direction stays the same. This is because the acceleration in the x direction is zero since the net force acting on the charged particle is downwards. So we need to calculate the velocity in the y direction. So vy will be equal to voy plus ayt. This will be equal to v naught sine theta minus QE all divided by M multiplied by T. So clearly you see that the velocity in the Y direction this is T this is VY goes like that. And the velocity in the X direction this is T this is Vx remains constant. At maximum height, the y velocity is zero. So it continues straight down, if you don't mind. So the next thing would be to calculate the time to reach maximum height. 
what do we know at max height vy is zero what does that mean it means that v naught sine theta minus qe divided by m c max will be equal to zero which would mean that C max will be equal to M naught V naught sine theta all divided by QE. This is the time to reach maximum height. So we have the time to reach maximum height. So the natural thing for us to do is to calculate the maximum height. Remember, the maximum height is this distance, y max. And it is a y distance. Generally, from the equations of motions, y equal to y naught plus v o y t plus one-half a y t squared. So this will be equal to zero because the object begins at the origin plus v naught sine theta multiplied by t max minus one-half a which is q e over m t max squared so all we have to do is feed in the expression for t max and see where that lead us to so this will become this would mean that y is equal to v naught sine theta m v naught sine theta divided by q e minus one half q e divided by m bracket m v naught sine theta divided by q e all squared so if we simplify we will have y max equal to m v naught squared sine squared theta divided by QE minus M V naught squared one of this M takes care of one of this M sine squared theta all divided by 2 QE so um, this we're subtracting this from this and what does that become equal to? That would mean that the maximum height, y max, will be equal to m v naught squared sine squared theta divided by 2 qe. This gives us the maximum height. Now the next thing that we need to calculate is the horizontal range L. It may or may not be equal to L but take note that if Y max is less than D that would mean that the charged particle never hit the top plate. But 
if y max is greater than d, it would mean that the charged particle actually collided with the top plate. And when that happened, the motion actually will change. In order to analyze the motion after collision, we will employ the law of conservation of momentum as well as the law of conservation of energy. Now the next task for us will be to calculate the horizontal range of the particle. And to do so, we will recognize the fact that the motion of this particle in the electric field is highly symmetrical. That means that for us to calculate the total time of flight, we just need to multiply the time of flight that the particle will take from the origin to the maximum height, multiply that by 2. So the total time of flight t is equal to 2t max, which means that t will be equal to 2 v naught m sine theta divided by QE. The horizontal range, we know that x is equal to x naught plus v o x t plus one half a x t squared. This is zero. This is zero. So the x distance is equal to v o x multiplied by t. Now the range r will be equal to v o x, which is v cosine theta multiplied by the time of flight, which is two m v naught sine theta divided by q e. If we simplify that, r will be equal to, so r will be equal to v naught squared bracket 2 sine theta cosine theta divided by QE. This sine theta cosine theta is just sine 2 theta, a trigonometric identity. So this would mean that the range is given by V naught squared sine 2 theta divided by QE. So this gives us the horizontal range of the charged particle in this uniform field. Now here's the deal. If R is less than L, that means that the particle actually collided with the lower plate before it. But if R is greater than L, and y max is less than d, it means that the particle exceeded outside of the parallel plate, or this is actually a parallel plate capacitor. Thank you so much. I hope that um, you did enjoy your time in this video. Um, I actually decided to solve this problem because it's really not found in the textbooks that you have around. And it's really an important concept for you to apply Newton's laws of motion with what you've actually learned in electrostatics. Thank you so much. Um, if you have any questions, please ask in the comment section below. I will be, be glad to help you um, in your adventure.